Hello and welcome to Spatial Cluster Analysis in the spring quarter of 2021. Uh, I'm Luke Anselin, I'm the director of the Center for Spatial Data Science and I'll be teaching this class. Uh, it's a brand new course, I just put it together, so there may be some glitches, but um, I, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's, it's basically uh, a spin-off uh, from the Introduction to Spatial Data Science course, where, as it turns out, within the quarter uh, time frame, it's not possible to cover the range of methods that I typically like to cover. So I split off the material dealing with spatial clusters in particular as a separate course. Um, the course will be asynchronous, uh, remote. Um, the main means of communication is through Canvas. So make sure you follow the directions and the announcements through Canvas. There will be uh, office hours using Zoom and I will schedule a couple of lab sessions also using Zoom um, later in the quarter. Uh, the main task, if you wish, for this course is for you to produce a research project, a research product, um, which really consists of three uh, deliverables. Um, in the first one, you have to come up with the research question and the data sources. In the second one, you have to outline your research strategy. And then in the final one, you put it all together. That's the final paper for the course. In addition, there will be three quizzes that will go over the material that I cover in the lectures. There's no text. Um, the materials are all included in the slides and in the notebooks available on Canvas, as well as in the Geoda workbook, which is sort of a textbook, not quite yet, uh, but it deals with all the, me the methods in the second half of the course that deal with multiple variables, multivariate analysis. There's no textbook per se, but if you really want to know more about, uh, say, spatial point pattern analysis, I would recommend this book on spatial point pattern analysis by Badley, Ruback, and Turner. It's really uh, both a textbook and a manual for the SPATSTAT package in R that we will be using for point pattern analysis. Then for the cluster analysis, uh, there's a classic book by Kaufman and Roussein, uh, Roussein Finding Groups in Data. It's uh, the latest edition is from 2005, but it's really an older book. And you can find a PDF in the library, so you can have access to that book. And then there is this one, Everett et al., which is a classic reference on cluster analysis. So these are not textbooks for the course per se, but these are additional readings if you really want to delve in to this material. And before I say a little more about um, what we're actually going to cover in, in this quarter, um, let me talk a little bit about prerequisites. So um, it's, as it turns out, pretty much impossible to enforce prerequisites, but I have to tell you what I'm assuming that you know already, and then you decide for yourself whether that is something you're comfortable with or if you feel that is uh, too much to handle. So uh, in essence, you should have taken the Introduction to Spatial Data Science course or something similar. You should be familiar with basic concepts in spatial analysis, the notion of spatial autocorrelation, some of the fundamental statistics, and you should also be familiar with spatial data handling. Specifically, you should know the Geoda software, uh, at least enough to carry out analysis in it. And you should also have a working knowledge of R. And we will not be using Python this particular quarter, but we will be using specific packages in R, uh, space, SPATSTAT for point patterns, uh, spatial epi also for the scan statistic, and then RGEODA, which is a, an R interface to the GEODA package. And this will require that you know how to load spatial data, change projections, uh, make maps, and things like that. So 
basic spatial data handling in R is a prerequisite. And um, if you want to pick up on that on your own, that is fine, but I will not be teaching those uh, basics. So um, let me just spend the rest of this uh, presentation talking about spatial clusters in fairly general terms. So first of all, what, what is the framework? And the framework is really the point of departure is the null hypothesis of spatial randomness. And spatial randomness is the absence of any pattern. So absence of any pattern in and of itself is not that interesting. And uh, spatial randomness is actually not a very interesting thing for its own sake, but it is very useful as a reference, as a null hypothesis. So really what our goal is, is not to find spatial randomness, but to reject the null hypothesis of spatial randomness and in favor then of some structure in the data. And this structure, the structure that we'll particularly be interested in is clustering or grouping. And there's really two very different notions related to clusters. One is the notion of clustering. I mean, these are often confused with each other, but it's important that you keep the distinction between a what I call a global property, which is um, a property of the pattern as a whole, versus a local property, which is a property of particular locations. So global clustering for example, would reject the null hypothesis of spatial randomness for a map in favor of clustering, which means that there is some structure in the data, but it doesn't tell you where that structure is. Whereas local clusters tell you where they are and, and specifically what type they are. So the distinction between clustering and clusters is that clustering typically, or at least in my terminology, will um, refer to a global property and the detection of, say, global spatial autocorrelation doesn't tell you anything about where that correlation happens in the form of particular clusters. So then what we will be interested in is cluster detection, is finding interesting locations in the data and as much as possible, in most of the techniques, not in all of them, assessing some kind of measure of significance, some measure of a type one error, the probability that, you know, I could be wrong, um, that the null hypothesis is actually valid, but I reject it. And there's many, many cluster detection methods. There's no way that in the span of nine weeks I can cover all of it, but what I'll try to do is give you a sense. And particularly, I'll give you a sense of uh, two big concepts, major concepts that have to do with uh, clusters. One is, as I already mentioned, the detection, the finding of interesting locations. But another one is grouping of locations, grouping of similar observations. This is the classic notion of uh, clustering in unsupervised learning in machine learning is how can you go from a very large number of observations to smaller uh, subsets, say market segmentation, uh, things like that. And then in terms of the interesting locations, um, I'd like to make a distinction between the concentration of events or locations points themselves versus the concentration of the attributes at those locations or the values at those locations and their neighbors. That is the notion of spatial autocorrelation that we covered in the Introduction to Spatial Data Science course. Um, the first notion is a notion from point pattern analysis, which we actually haven't covered yet in that course. And then the third notion is also known as regionalization, is the grouping of similar places. So um, just to give you an idea, this is a uh, heat map of car thefts in San Francisco as it happens. So this 
deals with points of events and the extent to which there is a structure in those points of events. So that's the first category. Then here is a local Moran cluster map, which you should be familiar with, which shows uh, hot spots and cold spots in a map of premature mortality rate for Chicago census tracts. And then the last example is an example of regionalization of grouping of observations, in this case, community areas in Chicago, into six larger groupings. So that is a, an example of what we will call contiguity constraint clustering or spatially constrained clustering. So let me then close with going over the outline of the course. We will be covering six broad topics and then within each of these six, we'll have several subsets and each of these subsets will be represented by a set of narrated slides, as well as either a notebook for R or a specific set in a documentation for Geoda when we use Geoda in the second half of the course. The first topic deals with clusters and point patterns or as it's often called point pattern analysis. And we start with a, a quick introduction of the main concepts. What are the types of point patterns? What are the main research questions, both exploratory as confirmatory? And then we move to a characteristic of the spatial distribution of the points, namely the intensity of the point patterns. And we delve uh, deeper into the concept of complete spatial randomness, which is the null hypothesis, and consider a particular device, a probability map, which is a way to find out if there are locations or areas with elevated presence of events or elevated intensity. Then we move to uh, visualizing the intensity and we focus on the concept of spatial heterogeneity and in particular on kernel density or also known as heat maps, which you saw an example of before. Then we move to a little bit more statistical notions, the nearest neighbor statistics. There's many, many di different nearest neighbor statistics and particularly we'll uh, focus on some nearest neighbor distance functions. These are also colloquially called letter functions because they're all known by a letter like the G function or the J function. And then we consider separately a very important, arguably the most well known of the letter function is Ripley's K function separately. And then we close the treatment of the statistical treatment of point patterns with a discussion of the local K statistic. And remember clusters are local and then the local joint count statistic, which is a counterpart to the local K. So that's statistical point pattern analysis. Then we move to also point pattern analysis, but more from a machine learning uh, perspective, more from a computer science perspective. And we uh, go over two well-known density based clustering methods, uh, DB scan and HDB scan. So these are um, measures to find groupings in the data, uh, they're really called bump hunting. Um, it's finding modes in a distribution, mode being an elevated point in the distribution where there's more, in our case, more points together closely than we would expect um, under the null. Okay. Then we move away from the points and in a sense we group the points into rates and we consider the clustering of rates. And we start with a review of um, what is difficult about rates and the concept of rate smoothing, the connection between risk and rates and the fundamental variance instability that is associated with estimates of risk. And that basically violates the standard assumptions behind classic spatial autocorrelation analysis. So therefore we need to adjust it and we look at an empirical base or EB local Moran statistic, which is a special version of the local Moran for dealing with rates or proportions. 
And then we close with the scan statistic, Kohldorf scan statistic, which is maybe best known through the SAT scan package. Uh, we won't actually be using SAT scan because there's some issues installing that on different machines, but we will be using a scan statistic that is implemented in the R package spatial epi. So it's the same thing. So that's the points and the rates. And then we move to, uh, so, so far it's been univariate. And now we move to a multivariate context. And the first is a bit of a review dealing with the concept of dimension reduction. So dimension reduction is really about getting a large number of variables reduced to something smaller, more manageable. I'll start with a quick review of the course of dimensionality and maybe some matrix algebra for those of you who are rusty in this. Um, and then the two main topics are principal component analysis and particularly we'll focus on how to make those principal components spatial and then also distance preserving methods such as multidimensional scaling and TSNE, which stands for stochastic neighbor embedding. That's a method also out of machine learning. The multidimensional scaling has a rich history in statistics, but also has now been adopted in the machine learning literature. And of course, principal component analysis is a very important in machine learning. Uh, as well as in statistics. Then we cover classic cluster methods, which are essentially non-spatial, but we need to know about them before we can move to the spatial ones. I start with k-means, then we go to hierarchical clustering, and we look at the four different, uh, at four different linkage methods, single linkage, complete linkage, average linkage, and wards method. And then we consider advanced methods, k-medoids, and spectral clustering. So that's kind of the basis of the unsupervised learning, as it's called, in machine learning. And then we move to the spatial part, spatially constrained clusters. And specifically, we cover three approaches. First, we see what we can do with the existing classic cluster methods and see how we can make them more spatial. I call that spatializing classic cluster methods. Then we go, we consider two different categories of clustering. First, hierarchical methods, and we specifically look at spatially constrained hierarchical clustering methods. So um, that um, in itself is a method, SCHC, spatially constrained hierarchical clustering. And then two specialized methods, one is called SCATER, the other one RETCAP. And then under the partitioning methods, we look at uh, AZP, which stands for Automatic Zoning Procedure, and then MAXP. Um, MAXP is a little different from the other methods. In all the other clustering methods, we have to make a decision about how many clusters we want to find. Uh, we call that P in this context. In MAXP, that um, P value is found by the algorithm endogenously. So this gives you an idea of what we will cover in the class. Um, think about seriously whether you meet the prerequisites. I, I'm not going to test them with a quiz or anything, but um, if, if you have never used R before for spatial analysis, then it's going to be rough going to uh, pick up the pace and keep up the pace in, in this course. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I will be in touch through Canvas on a regular basis. Uh, everything will be communicated through Canvas. So welcome and good luck, and I'll see you later in the quarter. <laughs>